There is a finished page, and it's all erased. You gotta scan it. To be a cartoonist is often an incredibly lonely kind of art. It's a solitary thing, but what's really good about when Nick lived with me is that we were able to share that space and really, you know, maximize like the energy of that room and turn a lot of like what we were doing separately into this combined force uh, of this infectious, you know, uh, vibrant, you know, creative brain trust, you know. Uh, it was it was a really good time. I really I really miss those days of when Nick I could look over my shoulder and see Nick drawing when I didn't feel like drawing. And that would like inspire me just to keep trudging along even when I was like struggling or you know facing that blank page and not knowing what to do next. Because you spend a lot of hours sitting at your desk doing very tedious work. And then you also spend a lot of hours at your desk doing a lot of fun work. And those hours go by really quickly. But then there's days where you're lettering or you're coloring and it's not that mind in intensive. Okay, and this is where we do the scanning part. This is the part where you tap and wait. Yeah. This is the boring part. Always get a stretch or you get a sore back from being a cartoonist. Because <laughs> you're always hunching over and drawing. That's why you need a community of other artists, of other cartoonists who understand. Because nobody else will understand the craziness that you go through. And there are people that don't that don't bug you too much because they're doing the same thing you're doing and they want to be left alone a lot of the time. But they also need to come together because we are human after all, believe it or not. And I have little tiny bits of little errors, little holidays here and here where I, will, I, I call it taking a holiday, taking a, your mind takes a break and does these little mistakes. Schmutz there. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. See how it looks? Looks great. I think it's ready to be colored. I'm, I'm just doing rough colors right now. And I'll go in and do the details after I figure out where the basic colors are going to go. You don't have to do the coloring on a computer, but um, I do. Just because it's uh, it saves me a lot of time. The line work's on a different layer. That's what it looks like without the line work. It's like coloring in a coloring book, kind of. I feel like doing that sort of thing. Gotta make sure I get those little lines. Everything is neat and tidy. Now I'm gonna make a lettering balloon. You can't have people talking with uh, circular word balloons and then switch to square word balloons and not expect them to say to themselves, well, wh why did the author change from square word balloons to, to round word balloons? Are they trying to tell me something? That the, do the square word balloons mean they're happy and the round ones mean they're sad, or vice versa? You have to add a little, it's called a tail. So there's rules that everybody who reads comics agrees upon, like language. It's just like a language. A very important thing about comics is that they're not to be looked at and the words aren't to be read while the pictures are looked at. It's all supposed to be read. The, the, the pictures and the words together are supposed to be read. There's not a disconnect between the words and the pictures. And when you're reading words and pictures together in sort of a narrative sequence, um, it's, it's a unique experience, an, ex an experience like no other. There we go. And I can make the tail go whenever I want. There. And the <laughs> next step is to put in some text. Hey there. That's not really what he says, but just to show you. That's a good example of how the text gets created. And here's the finished product. I created my own typeface, drew it on a piece of paper, I used the scanner to scan the letters in, and then I used a program called Fontographer to make my own font. 